Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about hormone secretion and target cells. So hormones are chemical regulators secreted by endocrine glands and cells and tissues. Um, and so when there is stimulation for hormones to be secreted, they are secreted in short bursts. So they're not just always secreted by whatever gland or cell that secretes them. They're sent out in short bursts. Those bursts become more frequent when there's greater stimulation to secrete and less frequent when there's less stimulation to secrete. When there's less stimulation to secrete, uh, then we start to inactivate and excrete those hormones that are already in circulation in the blood. Um, so if there's a hormone that's circulating in the blood and essentially the body deems that we no longer need as much or any of that hormone in circulation, then the liver and kidneys will start to um, filter and excrete those hormones. Um, there's also enzymes that can be released and deactivate certain hormones. Uh, so it takes a little while, the effects of hormones are longer lasting because it takes a little while to deactivate or to excrete those hormones once they're circulating. Uh, so there are a few different ways that the body controls hormone secretions. Uh, one is via the nervous system. So in some cases, the nervous system directly stimulates hormone secretion. Uh, so that would be a motor function of the nervous system would be to act on an endocrine gland. Uh, in that case, that would be an effector, meaning that uh, it's something that the nervous system acts on and sends motor control or motor commands to cause some kind of action. Um, so an example of that would be nerve impulses that are sent through the nervous system to the adrenal medulla uh, during sympathetic stimulation. So during fight or flight, we know that we have a lot of adrenaline in circulation, which is just another word for um, epinephrine. And so um, when we go into that fight or flight stage or state, uh, the nervous system is causing all sorts of effects around the body. And one of many is to act on the adrenal medulla to cause it to uh, send out epinephrine and norepinephrine or adrenaline and noradrenaline. Uh, so those hormones then are going into the blood circulation to act on many, many structures throughout the body. So that's what makes fight or flight more of kind of a long lasting, sustainable um, thing, as opposed to if it was only controlled by the nervous system with no endocrine support. Another way is via chemical changes in the blood. Uh, so there are some uh, hormones that are secreted in direct response to the thing that that hormone is regulating. Uh, so an example of that would be glucose in the blood that depending on how much glucose is in the blood, it might stimulate release of either insulin or glucagon, which are two hormones that we use to um, either increase or decrease uh, the glucose in the blood. And then a very primary way of causing hormone secretions would be other hormones. Uh, so hormones secreted by the pituitary gland, which we commonly refer to as the master gland, uh, those hormones travel throughout the body and act on other glands and cells to cause them to release their own hormones. So a hormone that whose job it is to cause release of another hormone, we would call that a tropin or a tropic hormone. Um, so any hormone that ends with tropin or tropic means that it's a hormone whose job it is or its action is to tell some other hormone that it needs to be released. So target cells are the cells in the body who specifically respond to a hormone. So any hormone only is able to act on whatever its target cells are. It might have many different kinds of target cells and the target cells might be spread all throughout the body, but a hormone can only act on its target cells. And for it to be a target cell, it means that it has protein receptors on its surface that only can receive that hormone. So we call that the lock and key mechanism because in this case, the hormone would be the key and it only can open specific locks that that key is designed for. So the lock would be the receptor on a cell and only a specific hormone, a specific key is able to open that receptor or activate that receptor on a target cell. 
So any given cell could have receptors for many different hormones and any given hormone could act on lots of different types of cells as long as those cells have the right receptors to receive them. Um, so the action of a hormone on any cell depends on both the hormone and the cell. Um, so different target cells respond differently to the same hormone. So we might have one hormone circulating throughout the entire body acting on its many different kinds of target cells and different kinds of cells are going to respond differently to the same exact hormone because it depends on the programming of that type of cell and what it needs to do in response to that particular hormone. And then the flip side, you know, it's also true the other way. The same one cell will respond differently to many different hormones. So that one target cell, it could be a target cell for 10 different hormones. So one cell could have receptors for many different hormones and it will respond differently to each of those different hormones. So the action of a hormone depends on the hormone itself and the cells that it's acting on. Okay, that's all I have for you in this video. Thanks so much for watching.